You know, I'm actually now, as of this moment, even more mad at Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange, a movie I famously cannot stand, because Disney had the opportunity to do the funniest thing ever and have some interaction with Cinderella 3, A Twist of Time. <laughs> and they didn't. Welcome back to Not My Fantasy, the show where we talk about fantasy films and the lore that inspired them. I'm Cullen. And I'm Hannah. And today we have uh, a special friend, a former coworker, but most importantly, a comedian, Eliza Halpern. Hi! I love special friend is a great description. Special yeah, friend. You're a nice. special friend. Yeah. I'm going to start calling people my special friend. <laughs> special friend. <laughs> You know, you we've talked about my Cinderella themed birthday this month. Yes. And Eliza actually won. There was a competition at my birthday. There was like a game and then there was also like a like best dressed. <gasps> and I had like a tiara and a sash. So wait, which did you win? The game. I got oh. pretty competitive with But you the got both. Game. Yeah, it was a combined bell of the ball. Nice. You were good at the game and you came dr- like oh, dressed. Wait, yeah. What did I wear? It was it was it wasn't like a full costume, but it was like a nice like vibe of like dressy, but like not like in a weird way. I don't know. It was cool, like cool. it was a cute outfit and <laughs> nice. you were very competitive in the game. And I was like, all right, do for two. I have love the that. tiara. I can put it on. It's on my <laughs> oh desk. Oh my god. Oh like, put I it love it. Yes. Oh my gosh. I actually want to see it. Yeah, get the tiara. Show it up. Show it up. She I remember she offered to like be like, oh, like you can keep it. And I was like, I got it yeah. on Amazon. Like, yeah, it's it is... like it's re- here. She is beauty and grace. Beauty and grace. She is Miss Cinderella themed birthday party. <laughs> Amazing. Wonderful. I gave this to my friend when I was giving her a ride and was like, "You're the passenger princess." So <laughs> you can wear this. that's that's a great bit to just have a crown in the car. <laughs> like, I'm, you're the passenger my, I want to get one that says passenger princess. That yeah that smart 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 uh so yeah uh eliza is a comedian tiktoker you may know her uh from possum girl is the name of your tiktok and instagram uh and i actually just saw one of her shows you were in this competition those aren't the words where you have to like come up with new lyrics to songs and there's like some some of it's improvised but the first round you come with a song and you did kelly clarkson's breakaway about la traffic and it was, I was dying. It was hysterical. So I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Um, for the record, for people listening, I cannot sing. So a Kelly Clarkson song was ambitious for me. But throughout the whole song, the bit was kind of that, like, my character was crying about the woes of driving in LA. So it kind of worked because I was just like, my voice was cracking because my character was upset. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's real. It was real. That's what was so funny is it's like, yep, this yes. is all, this is all true. This is not an exaggeration. And yeah, and you change the words throughout the whole song because I think sometimes with lyric parodies, if you just like if they just keep the same chorus, it gets like okay, you know, but you kept it fresh. Keep on, kept yeah. us on our toes. Yeah. So uh, that was what was the name of that bar or comedy venue? The Nightcap. The, the Nightcap. Cap. It's a it was, cool small venue in LA. Yeah, it was like this tiny little place, and it was super fun. So definitely check out the Nightcap, but also check out Eliza's comedy. Yeah frequent guest on uh, in our podcasting history I w- i've been waiting to have eliza on for a truly unhinged movie <laughs> story of my life it's like let's save eliza for some bonkers shit <laughs> some bonkers only shit. she will be able to piece this together i think you we about. we saved the glee episode with the mini sue doll oh, i said the mini <laughs> sue doll and the the kidnapping of, of yes blair um, and kurt yes, yes. The legal yeah. kidnapping. To try to get them to, uh, to make out. Yes. Yeah. Um. Hi. This is my new kitten, Edgar. Oh, Edgar. He... No, that's not Lucifer. 
<laughs> no, it is not yeah, Lucifer. So we're talking about Cinderella 3, A Twist in Time, mm -hmm. the 2007 straight-to-video classic. Uh, so as we know, there was, there was Cinderella 1, not A Twist in Time. Uh -huh. uh, Famously, then, as it's called. Yes, and then Cinderella 2, Electric also Boogaloo. Not a twist in, also not a twist in time, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> so, or Cinderella <laughs> 2, A Dreams Come True, as the normies call it, but that is incorrect. Uh, and then Cinderella 3, A Twist in Time. I firmly believe that this is the numbering scheme each trilogy should have. So it's Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings 2, Electric Boogaloo, Lord of the Rings 3, A Twist in Time. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> no notes. Yes. So uh, truly a, an iconic trilogy that people always think of as a trilogy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, so I have to correct myself. I thought I had seen this because I was like, wait a second. I remember there being some wonky stuff where I don't know how, but Anastasia starts dating someone or falls in love. But I remember that person being a baker. And that happens in... I guess they're vignettes, right? In the second movie. The second movie is kind of like someone was like, should we do a Cinderella TV show? And they're like, nah, let's just make we it have a four sequel. episodes. Let's <laughs> yeah. just put them together on a VHS. Um, so I have, I saw that when I was young because also I saw the date that this had come out. I was like, oh, I would not have seen this movie. Yeah. In 2007. Um, <laughs> Edgar's disappearing into the background. Oh, I should have fixed your bow tie before we came on. Now you look ridiculous. <laughs> you look um, cool, yeah. But yeah, so I, because I think last episode you were like, oh, wait, don't spoil it. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, I won't say that I thought she was dating a baker, but that's not what happens in this. No, um, I, I did not see this when it came out um, because yeah, I would have been like seventh grade. Like I remember when the first, mm -hmm. when Cinderella 2 came out, I was still like, yes, oh my gosh, new content. But by the th I was pretty disillusioned by Cinderella 3, but I had a friend who had a lot of younger siblings. And so when he, he was in high school, when we were in high school, he was talking about, oh my gosh, they're watching Cinderella 3. And it was a time, like I loved it. And I was like, hmm. And then I'm not gonna say where I watched it, but I found a copy on the interwebs. Mm -hmm. and I was like this is fun this is a good time uh <laughs> so and every once in a while I do especially now that's on Disney plus I will just watch it because really? it is just like do you sit down and focus on it or it's yeah. like in the background I can't wow. I can't multitask like that oh okay. unless I'm like folding laundry or something that's like you know like rote like yeah. I can't so but maybe it was the pandemic, you know, it's not like when I'm super busy, I'm like, gotta set aside my Cinderella three time, but like, I mean, it's... I don't know. I could see that happening. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's just like, I'm like, this is fun. I'm having a good time. That's kind of my, my attitude to this. And I think because it came late in the Disney sequel arc, I think people mm -hmm. don't think of it. And I'm like, they should, they should. Mm -hmm. Also, I need to point out Cinderella is lower on this sweater. Eliza, had you you said you had, didn't even know there was a third Cinderella. I didn't. I have like a vague memory of watching a Cinderella sequel as a small child, like on somebody had a VHS of something that they got from Hollywood Video. Like, yep, uh, Hollywood I'm pretty, Video, baby. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Cinderella too, because yeah, 2007, yeah, yeah. we would have been in middle school by then. Yeah, yeah. People remember Anastasia and the Baker, and that's actually. <laughs> what inspired this movie is they're like oh well we could do more with that but so but it's not canon that this, that happened because uh, i know we're gonna talk about that we're gonna talk about what is okay. canon the I mean, parallel they universe is hannah there's so many timelines <laughs> i know time. oh marvel and I, and I also watch our next uh video or our next movie for our next episode yeah. that we're recording and so time travel is just, it's fucked up my brain. I'm rotted. You know, I'm actually now, as of this moment, even more mad at Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange, a movie I famously cannot stand. Because Disney had the opportunity to do the funniest thing ever and have some interaction with Cinderella 3, A Twist of Time. <laughs> and they didn't. They mm. didn't. Disney owned the world and gave us a multiverse movie that was New York in different fonts. And I'll New never York in different fonts. I'll never forgive them for that. Literally, just like the sky color was different. Um, 
we're going to talk about parallel universes. We're going to talk about Disney sequels and their history. We're talking about a lot of, there's a lot of interesting lore this movie kind of intersects with. Something I do want to point out. So this is the only of the classic princess movies to get a sequel. I think Snow White sequels were debated, but Snow White was kind of considered sacred. Mm. And Sleeping Beauty was kind of considered sacred. There was a short where it was like a Jasmine short and then an Aurora short. Um, And then the voice actress who played Sleeping Beauty was like, I don't like it. Um, And she was old (laughs) enough to be like, I don't care. I don't like it, guys. (laughs) Uh, So, but this was, yeah, this was uh, Cinderella. It got a lot of sequels. Um, And this is actually the second to last Disney sequel uh, to come out. Yeah, uh, it was the final film of Walt Disney Television Animation Australia, part of Disney Tunes. And after this movie was completed, all their equipment was auctioned off. Uh, So this was their final project. uh, And they were actually given more reference material than the creators of Cinderella 2 Dreams Come True. Because if you notice, this animation quality, pretty good, especially compared to a lot of the Disney sequels. Sequels, yeah, yeah. And I guess, you know, if they're given more reference material, no wonder they got a whole ass film out of it. (laughs) And they can only do vignettes for the other one. (laughs) It stars Jennifer Hale as Cinderella. She's an incredibly accomplished voice actress. She played Commander Shepard in Mass Effect. Um, She's played a ton of Marvel and DC characters like Jean Grey. But she's been Cinderella's voice since 2000. And at various times, also Aurora. You know, when they are like, ah, we don't need to get a full separate actress. We'll just (laughs) throw in Aurora's lines. So C.B. Barnes who was played Prince Charming. He was the voice of Prince Eric and the Little Mermaid, uh, but not the Little Mermaid 2. He could not make it back for that one. He did uh, not want to be a part of the electric boogaloo. <laughs> no, uh, but he voiced Prince Charming in Cinderella 2. Uh, he's also the voice of Peter Parker in Spider-Man the Animated Series. Mm. And uh, he played Greg Brady in the Brady Bunch movies. Uh, <laughs> so <Don't> cool. kick me. <laughs> This cat. Edgar really wants wants to get a mic. He wants to be on the show. You want to yeah. be on the mic? I'm going to hold your tail down. Uh, the stepmother is Susan Blakesley. She is the voice of Wanda in The Fairly Odd Parents. Oh, that's uh, interesting. As well as Disney's go-to voice for Lady Tremaine, Maleficent, the Evil Queen, Cruella de Vil, Madame Leota and Flora. Uh, she's Gaia in God of War 2 and the Evil Queen in Shrek the Third. So these are just highlights guess... of these people's careers. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, very accomplished voice actors for sure. Yeah. Um, that's so funny that you say that now that she was Wanda, I was like, okay, now I'm going to be able to hear it. Yeah. That's so wild. And then there's Tress Mc- McNeil as Anastasia, Rusty Taylor as Drizella and the Fairy Godmother, Andre Stoka as the King, Holland Taylor as Prudence, Rob Paulson as Jack slash the Grand Duke, Corey Burton as Gus, and Frank Welker as Lucifer. Directed by Frank Nissen, written by Dan Berenzen, Margaret Heidenry, Colleen Ventimiglia, and Eddie Gazillion. Uh, music by Michael Weiner and Alan Zachary. Uh, they wrote original songs for this as well as a crew Disney cruise musical called Twice Charmed, which actually had a similar plot. It was a Cinderella alternate timeline thing. And then after this movie came out, they just altered it, put in some of the songs from this movie and made it more like Cinderella 3. I love corporate synergy. Uh, mm-hmm. They also did the musical episode of Once Upon a Time. Among some other things. People generally kind of liked this movie when it came out. It earned 92 million. People were like, it's weird. It's fun. And it's widely regarded as one of, if not the best, of the direct-to-DVD video sequels. Lindsay Ellis gave it number one spot. It has a 75% on Rotten Tomatoes. Critically? Yeah. That's pretty good. People compared it to, like, that's like basically an Oscar for one of these direct-to-DVD sequels. It's like... The peak. Uh, and I, I'm going to say, I do think it's the best of the bunch. I know people will always go for Lion King 2. And I'm like, I know you want to fuck that lion. I know everyone loves Kovu. And they're like, it's hot. But, and I'm like, 
the no. story is not as good because no. trust me I, that that movie i love that movie i love watching that movie and i love making fun of that movie and i love watching that movie seriously because that lion is hot but i also just like yeah the story for this movie is just like way better and it, and it, because it doesn't do the thing where it's like now the protagonist is a grumpy parent it's like oh what if we just follow the actual protagonist <laughs> yeah and it's it like uses similar beats but it twists them if you will Ooh. um it's it's fun like it it is kind of like a fun thing of like oh what how would lady tremaine use this power yeah um, yeah it 75 percent well deserved i think well deserved uh and so i was debating you know if we're getting to the lore of this of what we're going to talk about with this movie because i was like we're doing this podcast we're going to do this movie at some point <laughs> <laughs> i was like we have to have a cinderella three but the lore we're doing lore in three parts mm. For the three. Part one, <laughs> part two, Electric Boogaloo, and part three, Twist in Time. Yes. I'd also just like to chime in to say that in terms of the best Disney sequel, I am a Lion King one and a half truther. I am a Lion King one and a half apologist. <laughs> yes. I apologist. make yeah. everyone watch that film. That, that movie is, is fun. That is fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, that's definitely a top, one of the top ones. Because it's also the only one I remember clearly. Yeah. Isn't that one technically like number three wasn't it after number two that it came out yeah Yeah. but it's like takes place concurrently yes yeah um what a weird concept um also i you know what i also think that king of thieves prince of thieves of the aladdin movie the third one yeah uh also very good um i would say that one story is also better than the Lion King story because Lion King two story has a lot of holes yeah that have not been you know questions have not been answered and I you know I think actually one of the things with Cinderella 3 is that it focuses mainly on elements that have already been introduced whereas mm-hmm. Lion King 2 is like remember these lions that used to hang out with Scar and you're like what no and it's like no because they didn't he was a loner or yeah, a, little a question that has been answered Little Mermaid 2 will, will be like, Ursula's crazy sister. And you're like, who's she? Like in this movie, you have everyone you had before, except the king gets a little more, the duke gets a little more, the the sisters get, the stepsisters get some more, the trimming gets more. It's like, yeah, it's keeping everything still barely contained. The only new character is the one played by Holland Taylor, the, yeah. um, who's inconsequential. And she was you know? from Cinderella 2. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I yeah. don't remember that, but yeah. She was like, it's Cinderella 2, you know, spoiler for whenever we cover that one, but, uh, you know, there's the, there's a, a three shorts. One is Anastasia and the Baker. One is Jack Jack wishes to become human and is human. And then that. one is, the first one is like Cinderella struggles to adjust to palace life and like Prudence mm-hmm. is the one who's like, we have to be etiquette. It's very like Kirsten Dunst and Marie Antoinette, you know, like, except she's like, I want to hang out with my friends from the village. You know, she's like, I don't want to eat prunes. You know, it's very. Yeah. yeah. Cinderella 2 is a pretty low stakes film. Uh, so part one, Lord part one, not a twist in time. The Disney sequel. So what is what's going on with that? In the 90s, there was Disney Toon Studios and it made shows like DuckTales. And they would start with like, because this was the VHS boom. It had initially been like, let's not put, because Disney movies used to be released in theaters before VHS, like they'd re-release movies. And then so they were nervous about putting them on VHS and they kind of were like, let's start with like Pinocchio and like see how that goes, you know. Um, And then it was like, oh, this is a ton of money. And so so then they would just package like the first few episodes of a TV show onto a VHS. And then they were they were like, OK, this is like a great we can sell it as a movie, but it's like the first five episodes. And they were prepping the Aladdin show. And one of the people were like, what if we just made a movie to start it? And so mm-hmm. we get Return of Jafar with Iago. Oh. Yeah, uh, Iago's redemption arc. And it did super well. It made a ton of money. And they're like, what do you say we keep these good vibes going? (laughs) (laughs) 
and uh you know we go we like we make a bunch of these and now q now disgraced pixar had john lasseter uh and later disney had when he becomes in charge of disney he's like i don't like these no more aristocats 2 is canned hercules sequel chicken little sequel Okay, the Chicken Little sequel, that's a crime. That's it, a crime. Release the Chicken Little 2 cut. Release the Lasseter cut. What are you afraid of, Disney? <laughs> Even if it's just like 2D animated storyboards, just give that's us what the, I like, want. That's what the I flip need. book. Exactly. Yeah, truly. Uh, yeah, this movie is in a post-Chicken Little world, but only two years post-Chicken Little. Mm, interesting. Yeah. So, uh, ACL? Two years ACL after Chicken Yeah, Little? after Chicken Little, yeah. So uh, he was like, okay, let's look at what... He was like, let's give some more money to Cinderella 3 because that seems to be working. And then Ariel's Beginning will be the last of these, mm. uh, which is basically Footloose, but with Ariel. Um, that sounds amazing. <laughs> Footloose, but I'm with Ariel. swim around this town. <laughs> yeah. Uh, King Train Outlaw's music. It makes him think of his dead wife. Yeah uh <laughs> yeah so that he wanted to focus more on like a branded world so that like the planes fire and rescue movies the tinkerbell movies you know like a world of characters the that could planes, be planes a... fire and rescue movies <laughs> famously yeah. of course I everyone knows this. looking up an image of yeah it, isn't it just like um a rip cars. off of cars yeah it's the cars universe so it's yeah. like they were just trying to, he's like, what if we made a universe that's very marketable, like fairies, cars, and just made movies in that universe instead of yeah. like well, I mean, it makes draining sense. these IP. Planes are just cars with wings. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but they're not Lightning McQueen. You're right. Like people real. get attached to characters and then they're like, who are these new people? Who are these? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so this meant an end to, uh, some people say this is like, this was kind of, part of the one of the death knells to 2d animation <laughs> just hannah doing a symbol with her cat yeah uh, Bye, <laughs> yeah uh because you know disney you know disney like would release princess and the frog in 2009 right like so it wasn't like totally over but the 2d animation you know was being replaced by 3d and it's becoming like western 2d animation not a lost art but like this like whenever they're like Disney should just make another one of those it's like they don't have the tech around the technology like that stuff is being gotten rid of and mm -hmm. the end of Disney sequels some say was part of the end of 2D animation so we can really blame John for that uh that's the history of a D the Disney sequels that's a quick down and dirty um there's not a lot of research on those um the director was just kind of like of oh, this movie i read an interview and he was just kind of like yeah we're just gonna make it you know it was fun <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, people made movies just because it was fun <laughs> yeah. yeah and i think you know there's a thing that happened with 3d animation where it's like when your only tool is a hammer everything looks like a nail where it's like oh we have this new thing and it's advanced therefore people must want it we have to use it for everything and like there's obviously a lot of nostalgia around like really nice high quality 2D animation, but with, mm -hmm. done with modern technology. Look at the Ghibli films and how popular yep. all of those are. Like, yeah, it's yeah. something people want. They don't just want like bulbous plain CGI thing fly in yes. the sky. By the way, the yellow and red, uh, I think forest fighter fire fighting plane from Planes Fire and Rescue looks like Ryan Reynolds. Anyway, <laughs> okay, I can't wait to look at this up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. The, it is. Yes, definitely. With dude, it's it also is just came down to markets of like DreamWorks and Pixar were like making a ton of money and like Treasure Planet and Home on the Range weren't raking in the cash. I mean, Treasure was, Planet flopped. Treasure Planet did flop, which I do oh, enjoy yeah. that movie. I it's a good movie, but it did flop. And then they're like, you know, it's going to save us which I think was done almost intentionally to sabotage. I don't know. I really don't know. But uh, Roseanne as a cow, Roseanne Barr oh. saving a farm as a cow. And they're like, mm, yeah, Brother Bear and then Home on the Range, we're ending this. Yeah. Uh, and then we got Chicken Little. Yeah. Uh, so lore part two, Electric Boogaloo, AUs, fan fiction, 
what is an AU? It is an alternate universe. But if you look it up, people are going to talk about Australia and currency and other Boo. things. <laughs> Boo. Uh, it's a fan fiction term. It takes place in a universe where the canon events are different. So that could be like a certain plot event didn't happen. Like you do the show Merlin, but Arthur... I like doesn't die. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Spoilers, but we know how King Arthur goes, okay? But also uh, Merlin, didn't that end like years ago yeah, too? So yeah. it's also like spoiler, but like it came out a long time ago. <laughs> uh, spoilers for Merlin in this episode of Cinderella 3 A Twist in Time. Uh uh, <laughs> or it could be an AU, like they all go to high school or they all work in a coffee shop. I I wrote a Disney high school AU. Famously. Famously. Uh, <laughs> novel length. Yeah. Um, uh, Hannah, you have a note here about AUs. So and this is a teaser for what our future series or our next series is. I said future. Oh my God, I teased it again. We're going to be talking about time travel. And this is sort of our link. Um, so in my research about time travel in general I found this fun little thing and I knew that Cullen wanted to talk about AUs here so I was like let's quickly talk about it uh 1881's Hands Off by Edward Edward Hale tells the story of someone they're not clearly stated who is like the soul of someone who just died and in this journey they go back to ancient Egyptian times and they prevent Joseph from being sold into slavery by his jealous brothers and thus ridding the world of both the lesser beloved DreamWorks Bible fanfic, Joseph King of Dreams, and the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical. Um, so this is, this book or story hands off is, I guess, technically considered like one of the first like alternative universe novels based on uh, historical or biblical characters. So it's Bible fanfic. Bible fanfic. Wow. Fun fact. But that also means we wouldn't get Prince of Egypt. Because the That's true. Joseph is what brought the Jewish people into Egypt. Well, let's talk about canon. Uh, we've talked about this before, but canon. Uh, oh, Edgar. Uh, canon is a Catholic Church thing. It is like, yeah, it yeah. is like the Catholic Church is like, this is canon law. Like, this is official doctrine. And yep. so, like, they had a meeting where they're like, what is the Bible? What books do we consider canon in the Bible? So things that are canon are, like, the Bible, the canon list of saints, mm -hmm. the catechism, you know, those are, like, canon. And then Catholics, there's, like... the original lore keepers. The original, the, the big fandom, yeah. <laughs> uh, Semi-canon. So that's things like Marian apparitions, where the Virgin Mary appears to people. Some of them are considered, like, yeah, that's cool, but it's not canon like it's not required belief the visions of individual saints and then some saints like ursula and christopher who are very popular but historically dubious kind of fit in this where they're like we're not 100 sure that's a real person but you know too late now um uh and then there's things that are not canon dan brown's work uh <laughs> The Gospel of Mary Magdalene. You're gonna uh, you're gonna really upset the brownies. <laughs> the brownies are <laughs> upset. The Pelagian Heresy, the Book of Mormon, you know, things that are not well, I guess the musical and the <laughs> and actual book of the Mormon. Actual book. <laughs> so then uh so knowing where canon comes from, when then going stepping into our Disney sequels, canon. Well, when this is a bigger question about fandom like what does canon mean for these and like this also comes from like we live in an ip based society but like that's new so like do, do stories have to be canon like what right. is canon and like because most people don't really think of the disney sequels as canon but if you talk to the characters at the parks they are aware of these stories like these things events happened to them hmm. So I guess it is canon because Cinderella's like, yeah, I I got twisted in time. Yeah, I should. Oh, I've never I've never asked her. I should be like, do you remember both events? Say, do you remember when your evil stepmother had that wand? Like, wasn't that terrifying? Yeah. Next time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
or is this an au cinderella that experienced all of these things into it's, it's like still canon in disney but it's canon as like a, a split in the timeline and she's only the cinderella from one time like the california adventure cinderella remembers <laughs> the trista john version she's had they have alcohol there she's had a couple drinks and she remembers <laughs> when stepmother had the wand Mm-hmm. Also, and she drinks course, to forget. She, she drinks around the world and I've got to forget. <laughs> yeah. to live, like, I've got France Cinderella and knows. Of wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's just our kind of brief touch on canon. Also, happy Women's History Month. Uh, we realized that we did Cinderella for Women's History Month, which is she's the iconic girl boss heroine all across world folklore like the most popular one so it makes sense so these we did entirely female-led movies for women's history month which we definitely planned it like that yeah Yeah, and we're not just mentioning it now in our last one which i think is coming out on the last day of women's history month (laughs) and just now celebrating it no no (laughs) No. that, that didn't happen yeah so lore part three a twist in time let's talk about the trope of the false bride or the false hero which is a, a like a known folktale trope where someone poses as a hero, a loved one to steal a beloved, to steal a marriage, to steal attention for a virtuous deed. Hannah, do you remember when we talked about East of the Sun, West of the Moon in the Beauty and the Beast remake? And there was like the troll princess that the yes. prince was being forced to marry. So it's kind of that where it's like the, the love interest has been tricked or erased and they're forced. They're going to be forced to marry someone. who's Little Mermaid right. too, right? Little, well, we'll talk about Little Mermaid. So oh, oh. the slipper fitting in Cinderella, they Wikipedia lists as an example of this trope in that it's like a they're trying to like cut their no their no their toes. <laughs> uh, that's the third stepsister. <laughs> they're like, you don't get what's going on. Uh, they're like, <laughs> trying to cut their toes and their heels to fit the shoe, right? They're trying to trick the prince into choosing them, but they're false, right? A lot of Brothers Grimm stories really hinge on this. So you have the goose girl, the three little men in the wood, little brother and little sister, where there is kind of like a part where the princess or the heroine who's chosen by the prince gets their happy ending kind of taken by someone else, mm. maybe an evil stepsister or a witch or a servant, or and they have to prove who the real bride is. The Little Mermaid is a subversion because the temple girl or the convent girl believes she helped save the prince and there's no malice he knows who she is he's she's not posing as someone else he's in love with her it's just not who the little mermaid like it's not it doesn't work out for our main character right but in the disney movie right it would be an example because she is posing as someone else um so many cinderella and kind and unkind girl tale types have the false bride trope and uh, because we didn't do a St. Patrick's Day special this year, I'm going to give a, the quickest of recaps to an Irish Cinderella that has this trope called Fair, Brown, and Trembling. And that sounds like a Craigslist searching at, for somebody yep. ahead. But uh, those are actually yep. three separate people. Those once upon a time in Ireland, we have three sisters named Fair, Brown, and Trembling. Uh and they, you'd think they'd explain because one's pale and one's tan. They just, nope, those are their names. Uh, and the other one has anxiety. <laughs> yeah. So they they treat Trembling, who has anxiety, like shit. She's the Cinderella. She's always doing the chores. And she doesn't get to go to mass with them because she doesn't have anything nice to wear. So she goes to the hen wife, which is a ghost fairy. It's like a very, it's a specifically Irish thing. So you read hen wife, you're like, oh, that must be the lady who keeps the hens. But it's like, no, it's like a dead fairy ghost cool. so metal as hell uh and he <laughs> she gives her this cloak of shadows which like transforms her and gives her like different outfits for three separate sundays so she, first she has it in a white on a white horse in a white dress with a white bird then it's black then it's many colors and so she everyone's obsessed with her coming in standing at the door of the church serving looks like mm. she she doesn't even sit down. She like stands at the back and they're like sounds like false idols, but whatever. Silence, yeah. <laughs> but she's like, this is this is this this aisle, this church aisle is my runway. Uh, mm-hmm. and everyone's obsessed. And then on the third time she when she runs off, because they're like they're obsessed, but they won't talk to her. They have to wait till mass is over. And then right, you know, as they're finishing the last song, she's like, I'm out of here. 
Um, so this prince chases after her and uh, grabs her foot as she's on the horse and he she drags him along. Uh, and then he grabs her shoe and she's mad because she's like, I don't want this undead fairy to be mad at me because I lost one of the things she gave me. Uh, but she comes back and the hen wife is like, that might be the best thing that ever happened to you. Who knows? Don't be mad. Uh, the prince and all these other princes, because people have now traveled you know, over the three weeks to see her are like, we got to find her. And they're searching land with a shoe. And then when they get to their trembling's house, fair and Brown lock her in a closet. And the prince comes in and is like, Oh, we're trying to find this girl. And she's like, Hey, I'm in the closet. It's me. <laughs> like open the closet. They're like, no, she's a maid. They're like, He's like, open the closet. Uh, so she fits the shoe. And then all the foreign princes are like, we want her. So he duels them all. And then all the Irish princes are like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Edgar is killing me. Uh, it's attack Anna. Uh, but uh, the false or the the Irish princes are like, we're not going to fight one of our own. We support you. So they have a wedding that lasts for a year and a day. Uh, Got to be very expensive. Um, but she's got she has a son. And uh, after, like, as she's recovering from childbirth, she invites Fair, her oldest sister, to hang out with her. And Fair pushes her in the fucking ocean when they go for a walk. Uh, and a boy who's, like, keeps the cows, so they call him the cowboy, sees yeah. this. And he sees Trembling get eaten by a whale. Uh, she has a Jonah moment. Uh so does it end like the story of Jonah <laughs> or does that bitch get eaten? <laughs> so she's eaten and then Fair is like, oh my gosh, my my sister fell in the ocean. And he's like, oh my gosh, where's Fair? Like, uh, he's like, I'm where's trembling? And she's like, no, I'm trembling. He's like, what? She's like, yeah. And he's like, they look alike, but he's like, this, what? And so he puts us, he's like, I'm gonna put this sword in between us in bed. And if it's hot, you're my wife. But if it's cold, you're not. And this is a thing. It's like in a Welsh, sword or like a literal sword. A literal sword. It's a thing they do. It's in like a Welsh epic. It's in Brothers Grimm stories. It's like a thing in folk tales where like the sword in between the couple and bit like bed to either like protect your virtue or to figure out who's false or whatever. Um, but the sword is cold, so he's like not my wife mm -hmm. um and meanwhile the whale throws trembling up every wow. every night and the cowboy sees her on the beach and she's like because of the laws of this i can't talk to the prince but you need to get him to come kill the whale because the whale will swallow me every night but this will only last for three nights and if you if i'm not saved by the third night i'm gonna be stuck in this whale <laughs> so you need to go tell the prince so he goes to tell the prince and Eliza's minds are just like, what is happening? Uh, so they, so he goes to tell the prince and then Fair drugs him. She like feeds him a drink. And then the next night he's telling Trum Trumbling's like, did you get the prince? And he's like, no, like the lady gave me a drink and I passed out. And she's like, well, next time don't take any drinks. He's like, <laughs> okay, okay. So he doesn't and he tells the prince. And the prince goes and kills the whale, which is bleeding everywhere. And Cinda and Trembling is like, oh, now I can speak again. And says what happens. So, uh, or what happened to her. So Trembling and the prince are reunited. They take care of the cowboy. And he will later marry their next child, a daughter. Um, because she's like, I, Trembling herself is like, I'm so grateful to this cowboy. Like, he saved my life. I'm going to reward him. Um and with my like, child. With my mm -hmm. child. It's very Bella Swan. I was um, just going to say. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Fair is left. Her father decides his punishment for her. She's left in the ocean in a barrel with food for seven days. So Fair and Trembling, Fair Brown and Trembling too. Electric Boogaloo. Who knows where Fair is going to wash up. What, what happened to Brown? What happened to her? Brown was just like, you know, you take some L's and didn't didn't try and murder mm, his, yeah. his sister. Yeah. Valid. You can't win them all. Yeah. So that's that's kind of like an example of the false bride trope. Also, mm. happy St. Patrick's Day. Ha happy St. Patrick's Belated. Month. Belated. 
amazing. That was, um, hmm. That's really weird. I'm actually interested in talking more in the future, obviously, about the sword thing. Uh, I would like to know how that works and what that's about because so that's that, confusing. The hot and cold thing. That was my first time. Katy Perry's hot and cold. That, that was my yeah. first time hearing that song applied to the sword. Usually it would be like, oh, I'm not sure if you're my wife or you're like, maybe it's their brother's wife. And it's like a thing where the brother is the one posing. And it's like, they're like trying to be honorable. So they put the sword in between them. And the wife is like, what? And it's like, it's fine. And like, just to be like, I'm not messing with your, even though I'm posing as you to like do whatever shenanigans are happening in this story. I'm not sleeping with your wife. There's like something in between us. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And is it like a magic sword for the hot and cold thing that the sword like, is that how the sword communicates? Or is it I like wonder, I guess in this, in this story, maybe this, I mean, there's a, they didn't explain the whale thing. So, but this is, yeah, this, that thing that like, cause people are like, why do fairy tales always end at the wedding? That's actually not entirely true. There are actually a lot of stories that have this kind of like weird addendum like we talked about in sleeping beauty like the uh-huh. ogre mother-in-law but there yeah. are a lot of yeah there are a lot of like different stories that are like crazy things continue to happen uh it's just for a movie of weddings like a great finale scene yeah and yeah and speaking of you know what happens in fairy tales i mean cinderella in this movie not well read in fairy tales um because if she wants her life to be like a fairy tale I mean, there are all sorts of bad things that can happen, <laughs> sweetie. So yeah, <laughs> I remember when the today was a fairy tale. Like when that Taylor Swift song would be playing in the radio, I'd be like, "That could be a rough day." <laughs> I got stuck in a whale. <laughs> yeah, <the day. laughs> things so... weren't great back in the day. They're not great now. <laughs> yeah, it's like how violent. many how many murder attempts were there today for today uh-huh. to be a fairy tale? <laughs> Who tried to eat you? Was it a wolf or uh, your own relative? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's the lore for Cinderella 3 and Twist in Time. This movie does have some folklore behind it. Wow. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it does. You're right. Um, I'm excited to get into this crazy movie. <laughs> this crazy movie. Uh, so we open with uh cinderella's youtube channel intro <laughs> this is yes this literally. is her like you click on the channel and this plays i actually copied and pasted the whole quote because it's conveniently on imdb uh do you remember the story of a girl who lived a life of cinders and how she found true love because she kept a beautiful dream in her heart of course it helped that she had a ma- she had mouse friends who could sew and a fairy godmother who could do wonders with pumpkins that girl is me Welcome yeah. to my YouTube channel and you can learn and have your own happily ever after. <laughs> I love that idea. Um, yeah, so that was jarring <laughs> to start with. Um, also, she's like, yeah, I lived a life of cinders. That was never addressed in your movie, honey. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, they just said her name is Cinderella, like since birth. Yeah, so yeah, how silly um uh and we get uh a a little intro song uh a kind of ensemble number called perfectly perfect Mm -hmm. um where she talks about have a perfect life um we meet we go through these this portrait wall and i love that this movie refuses to have any realism with portraits like it's like it's like their photos (laughs) (laughs) like it's like shots from their wedding yes Um, and uh so she's talking about like who'd have guessed look at my life and she doesn't have her shoes because the mice are using them as boats and we meet prince charming and she's dressed in this kind of 80s businesswoman uh get up with like Uh, brown shoes like brown shoes yeah like literally i that's totally right 80s businesswoman or like 80s secretary yeah um and then he again i was like that is the gayest man i've ever seen so you know it's they're you know, they're keeping to Can- the canon the i canon, guess canon yes yeah her and her gay husband uh, yeah. yeah uh and 
we so they're running off we see the step family it's raining there like it's raining it was raining today in la speaking of i just need to point out this act of terrorism that happened to me i was walking to the coffee shop no i drove because it was raining i usually like to walk and there's someone doing like a an instagram or tiktok live on the patio while they're eating their food and i was like so scrubs scrubs core um and i was like i didn't know i was gonna be, I was gonna be on camera you know things yeah i'd say it's a los angeles thing but i'm sure it happens everywhere but like i didn't i didn't sign up to be in your tiktok live Mm-mm. uh mm-hmm. but anyways uh they're riding through the kingdom but we see the step family in there drafty ass house uh and they're trying to do all the chores uh because the stepmother is just an abusive parent but it also looks like a tornado ripped through there so i'm like what is this your first time ever doing the chores i think so like, i think in they're the just... months since she's been married they're like breaking plates uh my favorite is they like she like break out they break a plate and she's like where's the prince will marry me and then she dumps the shards in the sink and the also the cat is like Lucifer is like putting his bowl out because no one's fed him. And they like break yeah. the bowl. They just incompetent. And the stepmother throws laundry at them and she's like, pathetic. Uh, I wonder, I wonder, I said it looks like a tornado. I wonder if it's like this is what Lady Tremaine did after Cinderella got to leave and she just like ransacked the house she's like the that gift set of the of the angry white lady like throwing down the curtains have you seen that one where she like goes through the house and just breaks (laughs) things i think it's from like a telenovela or a soap opera i love that oh my god anastasia is having her want song she wants love um because you kind of get the idea that she's never actually experienced love or kindness in her life um and she sees cinderella and the prince run off to the woods and she's like "Ooh, uh so this and- means that the baker thing didn't happen yeah in this universe in this universe or does this do the events of this movie take place before, before. cinderella 2 mm. electric boogaloo maybe yeah. so is this cinderella one and a half <gasps> oh <laughs> oh <laughs> A one and a half truther right here. <laughs> a one and a half truther. I mean, all the Beauty and the Beast sequels are mid quotes. I didn't know they had sequels. Yeah. <laughs> do the objects get to be people in the sequels? No. Or like they they'll do to, like they go back to their prison of being objects. <laughs> yeah, they all take place in the middle, and they're all like, oh, got it, yeah. And they're all like, how do we make Beauty and the Beast relationship more uncomfortable? Like, if those are canon, you're like, no, I don't like the ending (laughs) of the first movie. (laughs) So she sees the the fairy godmother and the mice are, like, prepping an anniversary party. And she puts on them in their ball accoutrement. And she's like, oh, just like the night I sent you to the ball. And Anastasia is like, oh, that's how she did it. Cinderella did not tell them. (laughs) She's like, Also, it's wild that they live so close to the palace. When, like, that couldn't have been like that in the first movie. Like, they're yeah, there's so like close. a whole city in between them. Yeah, it's yeah. wild. She's like, and it's just like, oh, I wonder if she has a wand that she could spare. And I, I do love the lyric where they're like, nothing could ever come between us. And she's like, I would gladly volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do love this opening number. It is like very efficient in like how it gets us to the start of this story. Cause, she the fairy godmother throws her wand. We know she's a klutzy yeah. mess. Uh and uh Anastasia steals it and takes it back to the family. And she's like, look what I found. And Drizella's like, oh, look, a stick. Let's beat her with it. It's, yeah, it's like a switch, essentially. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, no, it's a wand. And then she's the fairy godmother comes in and is like, oh, please, you don't know what you're working with. Like. Uh, please give that back to me. And she calls she's her so grandma. Gentle about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like hmm. she's like, no, grandma, I'm not giving it back. And they they fight, and she turns like fairy godmother to stone. He Medusa's mm-hmm. her. Yeah, and My she's second like, Second Amendment wand freedom. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, and that's kind of like our an, our another another sympathetic moment where she's like, oh, I didn't mean to like kill you. Yeah. 
And that Lady Tremaine is instantly like, oh, we could get wealth, power, revenge. And I think this is such an interesting way with this thing to do with this character because she is so limited by being a petty ass bitch mm-hmm. and by her patriarchal mindset. So she can't think of anything bigger than ruining Cinderella's life and then slotting her daughters into the royal family, even though she has the ability to just make herself queen. Just make a castle, yeah. Yeah, she could yeah. do whatever. And like, she's so distracted by just ruining the life of someone who literally has done nothing to her. Like even, mm-hmm. so we see, okay, Cinderella became princess. All she did has done is not invite them to things. Yeah, and and kind of like the revenge is the focus. Like she's not doing getting Anastasia in there because she wants to give Anastasia this. She's like, you, out of you and Drizella, you're probably going to be the most successful at fooling this prince. Yeah, Like she's doing it for her own bidding. And yeah, it is like, it's crazy. Yeah. Evil stepmom's definitely one of those parents that's like, why did my child go no contact with me? My cruel, cruel child. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. To spend time with the family. All that did was lock her in her cellar and organize my other children to rip off her clothes. Yeah. Or even just like her actual children. It's like, oh, Gisela and Anastasia don't want to talk to me anymore. All I did was make them do the chores after I destroyed the house after their stepsister left. You know, yeah. all, all I did was verbally and psycho- psychologically abuse them. Yeah. She's so boomer coded. Uh, and so she's like, okay, I call on all the dark forces of the universe. Bippity boppity boo. I want to un- that bippity boppity boo is the only thing you can say with a wand. And it's now evil. I love that. Yeah. Uh, and so she's going to undo the happy ending. You know, because it again, I think it's like that that specific wand could do almost anything. You just need to say the three dumbest <laughs> words. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And so they like you see the time undo and it seems to be i want to talk about the rules of the time travel at the end but it's like i think it's more just a visual thing i'm not going to be super literal with it but you see them being like oh no you know like ripped apart uh and we're back at the and actually you made all the animation is like they redid it even if it's similar shots they redid it because like it just wouldn't look right Mm -hmm. um and uh, they go back to the morning that Cinderella tried on the slipper and she hurries things along and gets the slipper to fit Anastasia. She says she wants to go back to where all of her woes began. I would figure that she would want to go back to the night of the ball and make sure Cinderella does not go. But mm. then that would, th- but then that would force them to have a fight <laughs> with <laughs> the fairy godmother. Oh, which would be really cool. Like a Marvel, like one of those shooty shooty magic battles. (laughs) They're like flying around. Magic battles, yeah. But no, like that's the thing is, I'm like, I would have thought that she would have done it to like the night of the ball, make sure Cinderella can't go. I just, I I think it's because what happened at the ball is like so hazy to her. Like she Mm -hmm. doesn't really know. Now she knows. Oh, it was magic, but she doesn't really know how Cinderella got there. And the shoe thing is obviously like in the original Cinderella. So maybe she was like, if we go back to like after the shoe thing happens and he's looking for the girl that matches the shoe, then we know how to get an in with the prince to get my yeah. daughter. Yeah. Because Cinderella. otherwise there's no way to like, even if Cinderella wasn't at the ball, he wasn't dancing with them. Yeah. yeah. That gay true. man was like, they have no style. Yeah. He, yeah. He went for Cinderella because of her style. Though I do believe, I actually do believe the prince in Cinderella 3 is a bisexual. That's what I'll, what I'll say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They Love upgraded him. him from mean gay to himbo bisexual. Love that for him. Um, Not that um, bisexual is better than gay, but you, like, we got I very mean, little. you did the, call it an upgrade. I did call it an upgrade. <laughs> upgrade in, like, screen time and personality given and positive yeah. traits. <laughs> He he got stuff. He was yeah. just a a a, a, car- um, a cartoon before, literally. Um, I know you said we we're gonna talk about the time travel, but I do want to put this out there. Actually, it's more of a question. Anastasia, Drizella, and the, the stepmother—they know about the time travel having happened. Yes. 
Cinderella does not. Cinderella does not. They're okay, the, so it's so, like everyone who was in the room when the wand happened. So I guess they Lucifer get transported. Too. Yes, they all get transported. And then later the fairy godmother does know. Mm. I'm guessing because she's some kind of but divine she, fae being. Yeah, sure. That so she probably okay. exists in multiple timelines. Yeah, so Cinderella is just clueless about it. Okay. The fairy yeah. godmother is Doctor Who. Is she Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, they the slipper fits Anastasia and she's so happy. Um, and then they're leaving and Cinderella gets out because like we see clips of like the mice bringing up the so like all mm-hmm. that chaos is happening upstairs, but now it's just a few there are a few moments faster and yeah. she gets down and she's like, Wait, no, that's wrong. That it was me. And the stepmother's like, it's only a dream. I should really I think this scene is really cool where like just like like story wise, where Cinderella's like what like and she's like being totally gaslit <laughs> i love gaslighting but like just like the way it's set up where she's like i don't care where you go or what you do but stay away from the palace stay away from the prince she breaks mm-hmm. the glass slipper the yeah. evidence and is like oh and by the way clean up the broken glass and yeah leaves. and she still has that like physical violence aspect to her that we were we had talked about when we talked about the um well, I guess the other, the live action Cinderella's where it's not as physically violent in some of these scenes with the the stepmother, but they can kind of get away with it here um, because she's a cartoon. But yeah, she's still scary as fuck. She, yeah, she has like her cane like up against her Cinderella's chin. Mm-hmm. That just um pulled something out of the recesses of my brain, which is that in the original Cinderella, I remember as a kid when I'd watch the scene where they're like ripping off her dress and her like pearls and everything, I would look away. I was yeah. like, this feels violent. It is it, violent. It, yeah. it's, it's scary. Physically yeah. violent. Yeah. And so Cinderella's just like, it's not right. It was me. And then so the slipper's broken and she's like, like she closes the door to the house and it's kind of like, what? You know? Like, yeah. and if you think, I just think as we go through this movie, we have to remember that, yes, for the Step family, everything was a year ago. But for Cinderella, like, the ball, everything was literally last just, night. Yeah. yeah. So she's yeah. had, like, the craziest 48 hours. <laughs> yeah, I can't go back. Because she sings this song, More Than a Dream, where she's like, I always, like, dreamed of adventure or whatever. Maybe it was nothing. But now she's like, I can't. Like, I like, because the mice are like, we'll just go talk to the prince. And she's like, yeah, he knows me. Like, we met. So she's like, I want, I like, I want more than a dream. Like, I can't l- just live in dreams. Mm-hmm. So she's like, I'm going to go pursue my dream. Um, and again, it's similar to the Brandy one where it's like the events of the ball, like, have caused this in her. Yeah. And I, I do feel like, because I think some people are like, oh, this is such an, like, they upgraded her personality. And I do feel like in this one, it's actually more like, this is just what she would, I think the original character would do just in higher stakes. Yeah. Like the stakes for her don't get super high until the end. Yeah. And so like, we see that like, now that the stakes are raised, she's like, oh, okay. Like I have to, it, I'm not just trying to go to a dance for a night off. Like I need like, this is my out. Yeah. Um, These bitches and- have disrupted the, st- the space time continuum. <laughs> yeah. And at least repair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's the, the chosen one <laughs> she's the chosen one um uh i actually really like the more than a dream song that was actually like that song is what i remember when i like was writing my first like the sleeping beauty musical and i was like would i do another fairy tale and i was thinking of different ones and then i used to, that was around when i first saw this movie and then i was like i like this moment for this mm-hmm. character and so that inspired me to do a cinderella adaptation one of the bajillion on earth Mm -hmm. um but it's only it's mine um also i was gonna say there's no budget for bruno in this movie the dog is not here we don't talk about bruno (laughs) we don't talk about literally oh my god and i was like bethany would be pissed yeah (laughs) she's like what uh but there so now she just has jack gus and two birds her animal friend but there are no yeah there's no um (laughs) none of the girl mice yeah yeah. None of the other, yeah, it's just that can only animate so much, which at, at the end of the day, I was like, it kept it small, and so they were able to use all the pieces on the board, 
mm-hmm. you know, yeah. instead of like, where where did this character go? It's like, keep it small. And they also had to do a lot, not only with uh, Jack and Gus Gus, but also with Lucifer. Lucifer also yeah. has a lot going on. So. so back at the palace, there's fencing. I believe that I would say it's more epic this time. Mm-hmm. Um, are those dulled swords or are they just straight up fighting <laughs> with actual swords? Okay. I also don't think that the king would be doing this because no. the, the the king that I know but don't love uh, would not be fencing with his son. Like no. that man is like, I- I'm sorry, he's just like a lazy, he's a lazy king. He's just not doing athletic yeah. stuff at his age the king is like if there's any character that got a total overhaul i mean yes anastasia has the redemption arc but it's also like for her it's been a year the only character that's like this is not the same is the king yes and he uh he also does confirm what he thinks of cinderella she is for breeding and refinement yeah. of the bloodline yes i was yeah. like i was right sinister we don't want our Cinderella anywhere near this king. Like, yeah. bad news. I think, that, yeah, they made him much more of a romantic, though, in this one. Yeah. And it's like, in the last one, he's like, what is a boy and a girl other than, or what is love and a boy and a girl meeting under the right conditions? So it's like, yeah. heteronormative, was... drunk, violent. Yeah, yeah. very much not. Um... <laughs> I decided this woman people. is here under the right conditions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like conditions are in your head, sir. Yeah. Yeah. He so this one is a little is a lot more. Not just a little they like do a lot to try and make him sympathetic and you're not scared for Cinderella to live in the same house as him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's like, yeah, reading refinement, that's what matters. And he's like, No, I fell in love with her. He's like, and you think she's the only one with a size four and a half? And he's like, it's all I have to go on. Yeah. And then he's he looks at the portrait of his mom or his parents. And he's like, yeah, but like, what about when you met mom? And this is where we get into like, oh, now he's a romantic all of a yeah. sudden. The stars yeah. were shining brighter, you know. The touching of the hand. That's when I knew. Yeah. So then they get news that... Uh, Oh, they, they someone fit the slipper, and he comes in hot. He like throws open the doors, and then it's in a station. He's like, Ooh, okay. yeah, he gags, throws up in his mouth. <laughs> um, and yeah, and like Cinderella is like, she's kind of lurking, right? At this point, so, oh yeah, at this point she goes to the servants' entrance, and because she sees the guards, he's like, let's try the servants' entrance, and he's like, birds keep scarce. She puts the mice in her pockets, and she just takes a wheel of cheese. She's like, she's strategizing, which is uh-huh. what Cinderella did when she was locked in that tower. She's like, oh, get Bruno, do this. You know, now she's like, oh, okay, let me get the cheese. And then she walks in and then Prudence, dear Prudence, uh, <laughs> comes up and is like, who are you? Like, she's the only security here. She's like, who are you? Yeah, really. Like, <laughs> you don't work here. And she's like, oh, I'm the royal mouse catcher. She's like, we don't have any mice. Fake it till you make it, honey. <laughs> yeah. Improv queen. Yeah. Except the only thing is that, like, she's not going to get paid for this work. So it's like she's in the same situation again. Like, good thing this all works out because otherwise I'm like, oh God, would she have been trapped in the castle working for them, but for no pay because they don't have oh. her on the payroll? <laughs> like, yeah, she doesn't have that direct deposit set up. Yeah. No direct deposit set up. You always got to set up the direct deposit. Uh, And so it's the, the mice she's like i'm a mouse catcher snap i'm in trap and the mice are like Puck. and she's like I'm playing guys yeah like i'm acting <laughs> <laughs> i didn't like save you from traps and dress you just to change change yeah. now uh, i didn't build an entire mouse community in my dead parents house uh and so they are like running around and then the servants are freaking out and so she's like, oh, let me catch him. And Prudence is like, oh, yes, go catch him. Uh, and so she's sneaking around. But so, yeah, the prince sees Anastasia and he's like, oh, yes, this is really awkward, you know, but it seems like multiple people fit the shoe. And Lady Tremaine is like, but the rules say, and he's like, well, it seems you're the wrong girl, you know, like. 
I, I think he handled it like a champ very diplomatic he's like oh god i'm so sorry but then he does offer them a pretty shitty not prize but like um like a, a sorry gift he's like i'll have them escort you home safely as opposed to unsafely <laughs> yeah he's like they, i thought he was gonna be like oh you can have lunch and then the grand duke will escort you home <laughs> yeah yeah well you know you can stop at our our um uh oh god the like the shop yeah the, get, gift uh, shop. the gift shop stop at the gift shop you'll get a 20 percent discount yeah at the bibbidi boppity prince... boutique yeah. yeah the prince's <laughs> discount like a disneyland it's just like chicken fingers and <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> anastasia you, you gets can... like one of those turkey legs yeah and you know what? you can keep the commemorative cup for free you know it's no extra charge we're only yeah. going to charge you for the drink one of the chocolate covered ice cream sticks but it's like the prince's head <laughs> so, so the lady train is like no so she uses the wand and the mice see this because the mice peek up yes something that i would have wished out of this movie is that there would have been more consequences for someone who was non-magical to use the wand i yeah. wish that lady tremaine like every time she used it you know something would be happening to her um so that there's stakes for her as well like uh see that would be because this movie also gives me like an abc family original movie vibes mm. uh and that would be like a live action version i'm not saying right. a live action remake but like this gave me like that like a tv movie kind of energy yeah. like if this was live action it'd be like oh you know like whoever's big right now you know like some whoever whatever up and coming actress and that would be like the oh there's a price if you use it and you're not magical and then yeah she gets more desperate um yeah but yeah she uses it and the prince is brainwashed mm-hmm. into thinking anastasia is the girl he met at the ball yeah she like changes his memories where yeah. cinderella is gone and now it's replaced with anastasia this is powerful this is like nuclear grade magic in the hands of a petty bit <laughs> which is Did crazy she have experience the, with magic the, i was wondering because she knows when she's doing the thing in the sky the the stepmother knows the she's spell. a natural yeah. <laughs> Did she but go to witch school that's Literally? that's she something was kicked that i am out interested of witch in. school. she was kicked out of witch school it's because yeah like she that's why i wondered wanted some like consequences because like otherwise she just it also makes it really scary that like okay i bet you that that is like the hundred millionth wand that the fairy godmother has had because she loses them. Yeah. How many people around the world are just flinging around bippity boppity boo? Truly, that's World War Three. Yeah, so that's why I'm like, dude, we need some consequences because otherwise, like, this is a dangerous weapon. Like, yeah. the rings and Lord of the Rings. Yes, yeah. literally <laughs> yeah. rule them all. Yeah, it's exactly. the master wand, and yeah. So I will. Yeah, maybe she went to magic school and she got kicked out because she knows Cinderella at least saw magic before, but maybe she did. I but it wouldn't be Hogwarts because Hogwarts does no matter how much of a Nazi you are, you can still go there, uh, and they will give you more weapons to do your fascism. So wherever she went, True. it was probably a little more ethical, yeah. and they were like, you cannot. Like you're unhinged. Again, she may have gone to Boatons. Yeah. Um, because I feel like she would have been someone who went to one of those um sort of like really fancy, you know, prim and proper yeah. schools, which is sort of what Bobatons is. Yeah. Uh I do believe that she would have gotten kicked out because she's not good enough. Yeah. Because she but- actually turned out to be a squib and she just needed the master wand to actually do magic. Yeah. So- that's uh, my canon head canon head canon uh yeah his memories are altered and the mice see this and are shocked now apparently there was initially going to be a plot where there was like a whole mouse community in the castle oh <gasps> how fun and they were like we don't got time they oh, kinda... they're like um actually we actually have plot moments in this movie <laughs> as opposed to the first movie where we could do as much as we wanted with the animals <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i want an rpg of being the mice in the cinderella castle <laughs> you create your mouse character i love That'd that i love that idea this also movie actually shenanigans does give me video game vibes in some ways like kind of like oh. a like a like a like a rpg like 
you have to like solve puzzles and like jump around and escape guards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, I meant like a tabletop role playing game. Ooh. Like D and D. This D&D also has D and D one shot yeah, energy. D&D. Yes, it does. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, where it's like, yeah, it's like oh, alternate ending to the fairy tale. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see something brewing, brewing behind Cullen's eyes. Yep. He's he's writing it up there. He's like, I'm thinking about it. Uh so the yeah, the prince brainwashed. Uh the Steph family's walking around in the castle now. She's like, be careful. And it's just like, oh, look, a harp. Breaks it. <laughs> uh, because and Cinderella's sneaking around. Uh she's hiding from Lucifer, who's sniffing her out. And then she sees the prince. Uh, and she's like, oh, hi. And she's being all kind of like flirty. And he's like, Hey, this, this hurt. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, cringe, girl." <laughs> she's, she's like, like giggly. <laughs> she's like, "Oh, you silly goose!" And I'm like, "Oh, he doesn't know who you are." <laughs> <laughs> and he's a prince, so this has probably happened to him before. And he's like, "Oh, a stalker." Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, because they end up pinning it on her mental illness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, they fifty-one boy. fifty her. On a boat. This is gas. This movie is about gaslighting. It's about gaslighting. It's about predatory conservatorships. It's about... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and but like he touches her hand and he does notice something like a spark and looks in her eyes. Uh, and he's like, you know, when you meet a girl, he's like, the wedding's tonight, and she's like, oh, and he's like, yeah, when you meet a girl like Anastasia, you don't want to wait, and she's like, Anastasia. <laughs> And he has the green thing washed out. Green is the color of magic. Yeah, evil yeah. magic. Evil magic, evil magic. Yeah. yeah. And so the prudence comes by and is like, hey, you got to catch the mice. Uh, and she's like, wait. And he's like, okay. Uh, so yeah, this was... The Cinderella franchise is all about devastating this poor girl. Uh, yeah, just just constantly re-traumatizing her over and over again again all the events with like being she was locked in a tower this morning her dress was ripped off of her yesterday last night yeah she was chased by the police ring race last night yes and then she was just completely denied by the love of her life because she, well she doesn't know just yet but because he's brainwashed it's yeah. like he like doesn't know who i am like how devastating just yeah ugh. and then she's and- dragged away twice three times <laughs> oh my god and she just found out about magic yesterday too yeah yeah so she's been going through a lot uh and so the the step family is being shown the preparations for the wedding uh and it's like this huge ass cake and the she's like grand duke she's being uh mother-in-law from hell for the wedding like none of these preparations are suitable no roses she has an allergy and uh drizella and anastasia start a food fight mainly because drizella sucks and is instigating it yeah drizella she i also wanted her to be more jealous like overtly jealous rather than just like the quips on the side yeah. i wanted her to actually kind of like try to sabotage this thing that kind of would have been oh. interesting yeah like why am i not fun. the one chosen to be royal yeah. in yeah. the in the stage musical they had it that she said why anastasia and the stepmother was like i love her more <laughs> Holy what shit. if for the stepmother um hannah you talked about the stepmother having some like consequence every time she uses magic what if every time she uses magic she develops a little more empathy for her stepdaughter and actual <sighs> daughters and she's like i can't change it's just torture for her she like sees some memory of how she treated cinderella or cinderella crying Ooh. or her stepdaughters being like i guess we have to abuse our stepsister to like <laughs> earn mother's love money. yeah oh, that's interesting it's like, like she that. learns the consequences of her own actions yeah, yeah. It's like the evil stepmother equivalent of that like thing that's like men do mushrooms and discover empathy for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It, she you uh evil stepmother is messed with the fabric of the universe <laughs> and discover empathy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh 
so then they're like the the king meets them and he's getting frosting thrown everywhere and it's cartoon antics and he's like yikes uh and the prince is like well let's dance and she's like oh sorry i'm a little uncomfortable like these aren't my shoes i mean they are uh yeah she's like oh i don't dance much she's like we danced last night she's like oh yeah totally <laughs> And so she's a really bad dancer. To be fair, she's wearing two different shoes. And one of them is a heel and one isn't. Yeah, one of them is a glass heel. <laughs> yeah. And so it like clunks every time she walks, which I loved that. And he, Also, it's crazy. She's wearing it all day. It's like, take it off. Put on <laughs> yeah. shoes. Like... And he's step- she's stepping on him. And it's like, ooh. And... uh it's a mess and he's like super nice about it he's like it's okay you know you must be nervous uh and she's like he was nice to me no he he makes it his fault he's like oh i'm not up to date on all the latest steps and it's like oh my god like yeah yeah i felt so bad for anastasia which this movie is very effective in making us feel bad for her because like she does want the prince in a way but she wants love more yeah and she's just doing this because her mother is forcing her to do it's like it's horrible she's also a victim of the stepmother Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Uh, and uh yeah she because she's like oh kindness someone treating me nice wow uh and the king is like because drizelle is like making fun of her immediately like nice Mm -hmm. work whatever uh who could ever love you and the king's like oh i'd like to speak to my future daughter-in-law alone uh, i think he immediately clocks obviously they're throwing frosting around that this family sucks and it's like let me get her alone uh-huh Let, you know? let's figure out what this situation is <laughs> be like are you okay um <laughs> blink twice <laughs> it's, it's like, like when can- you go out to eat with somebody's family and people are sending food back treating the service <laughs> staff like shit and you're like let me talk to you alone uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, are you i do not like these people uh and the the king has like a again a whole portrait gallery um with lots of pictures of his dead wife who looks a lot like anastasia who he loved dearly and was a clumsy dancer uh and uh when they touched hands because he's like i'm gonna show you my greatest treasure and she's like ah it's a seashell um and he's like but when we touched hands reaching for the seashell like that's how when i knew she was the one and he's like a princess has many riches lands and stuff but this is my greatest treasure which i i thought that was great again making him more of the romantic you know i accepted that they were trying to change him they were correcting their past mistakes (laughs) yeah um not gonna lie i was like is he gonna get hot for anastasia because i also clocked that there was some similarities between her and his dead wife and i was like i was like they wouldn't do that and they didn't but i was like they had me going for quite a while i was like i don't know what's going on here yeah yeah um and i think because that is the thing royalty would do absolutely so it's like oh oh. no uh and so she gets her i her song i do where she's like fantasizing about like being married um she's really taken in like toxic wedding culture yeah. to the extreme uh and she's like somewhere there'll be someone who loves me <laughs> like really that's all she wants yeah uh, and uh she's with her family as and like drizella is overusing the wand and anastasia's like maybe we don't need the wand like i think the prince loves me and she and later is like love what's that compared to the power we could have with this wand and i'm like again make yourself queen what are you doing lady but she she wants that revenge she wants that revenge first she's like that's her plan she's gonna get this revenge and then she go bippity boppity boo boom i am the queen yeah she wants to fuck over (laughs) cinderella first yeah she's like i cannot be happy in a world where cinderella is happy even if i have all the riches and everything i could possibly want i could wish for myself to have the magical powers that i dreamed of having I could I could pay tuition to go back to witch school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pay tuition. Be my dreams. I gave up to marry this <laughs> chick's dead dad. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, she's resentful. Um 
I feel like maybe her bully at magic school looked like Cinderella. Uh, oh. And she's like one of those people who like cannot get over high school and is like taking it out in a major way on like a child who had nothing to do with it. Um, like they actually don't even look alike. They're just both blonde. So the meanwhile, Cinderella is crying because she's like, I fell for a fuck boy who's gaslighting me. You know, like, shit. And then the mice come in and they're like, no, it's magic. And they, like, do charades, essentially, to explain what's happening. And she's like, oh, okay. Like a whole ass play. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And uh, I just want to point out, because someone said this is such a ripoff of Enchanted, right? Because remember, there's that chipmunk uh, that performs for Giselle to explain things. Enchanted came out the same year, but in the fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this came so, out in February. So Enchanted is ripping off Cinderella through a <laughs> twisted tie. But also, like, yeah, like this wouldn't ever make sense anyway because, like, an animated movie takes longer. Yeah, like it's just, <laughs> yeah, people are silly, 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 silly. So uh, Cinderella disguises herself as the maid and is trying to get the wand. And so all this time, like, something was broken, and so like they're having this conversation while she's in there cleaning. Uh, mm-hmm. and the stepmother is like, wait. And she's like, Cinderella, and like rips off the hat. And Cinderella's like, you'll never get away with this. And she's like, we already have with the wand. And she's like, Jack, Gus, let's go. Because they get they got the wand from the drawer. I'm going to say she's a bit of a, a DBU alum in this moment. Uh-huh. Because I'm like, grab the mice and the wand. Thank you. And then you have the wand. Uh, but instead she's running down. I mean, you can run faster than the mice. She is. <laughs> she is like feet ahead of them. And the mice are just like, <laughs> and it's just Pick like, them up. <laughs> yeah, because then the moment you have the wand, you could just like freeze them or something. Bippity boppity undo everything again. You know, yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I, don't, I feel like she wouldn't like attack them, but she'd be like, stand in place. Like, don't move. Yeah. Or something, you know. Stupefy. Yeah. Uh, So she's, yeah, so she, kind of a moment where it's like, girl, think. But she, uh, (laughs) she's running. We get some cat and mouse magic antics. And the birds have got, she sent the birds to go get the prince. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he's like, oh, I'm being hijacked by birds. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, And she is she sees him and she has the wand and she's like lift the spell bippity boppity psh, the guards get her mm-hmm. they break through she put like a sword in between the the like door this movie is very fast paced there's a lot of like chase scenes and like action mm-hmm. um and uh she's captured because she's like this that servant girl is a thief uh and she's like wait and she touches his hand and he's mm-hmm. like <gasps> the touch um she's like and she's like you're under a spell and lady tremaine is like oh no she's crazy she's mentally ill Uh uh-huh we have to take her to get treated and the prince is like ah yes good please make sure that she gets the help she needs yeah i'm like like, dude you're also a dbu alum do you think that anyone who's like oh yeah we're gonna take this person to like a mental hospital has their actual best interest at heart yeah as Mm -hmm. she's as she's being dragged away He's like, oh, she seemed nice. Like, make sure she's okay. Yeah. Like, this is what happens when a woman tries to talk about what's actually fucking going on. Yeah. yeah. They take her away. Like, she's crazy. I mean, this is something people with, like, a lot of stuff that's coming out about, like, child actors and stuff. People are like, well, did it Amanda Bynes not say they're going to put me under conservatorship and take my money? And then did that mm-hmm. not happen to Amanda Bynes? Uh, so, yeah, Cinderella is about to be conservator shipped but that's a lot of work so on a literal no, ship on a literal a ship. ship she <laughs> doesn't have any money either to take so the stepmother is just like sent her on the first ship out the kingdom like i mean you don't have the power to exile someone yeah i was like who literally died and made her queen like she, she's confidence she's like girl boss energy fake it, like, till you make it. fake it till you make it like, yeah, do this. And they're like, I don't want to disappoint her. Look how high her hair is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and Look how so, severe her face is. Like, yeah. yeah, she's scary. So. Okay, so at this point, does Lady Tremaine have the wand again? Yeah. Okay. She, like, basically the guards grab her and then she grabs the wand. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
And so Drizella calls back and is like, we won as Sindel's being pulled away. And the prince is like, you won? What? what do you mean? And she's like, oh, I don't even remember what excuse she gives. I don't think she gives she's one. She goes, like, oh, oh, sorry. And then she runs away. Yeah. And then Lady Tremaine is like, oh, you know, it. she, ignore her, you know, she, um, <laughs> she, she's just, you know, mentally ill. And he's like, okay, well, make sure she gets taken care of. Yeah. Which is similar. She calls her an imaginative, an imaginative child in the first right. one when she tries to put on the shoe. She's a gaslighter. She's a gaslight gatekeeper girl boss to the core. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, she's being exiled. Uh, meanwhile, the mice find the prince because they're like somewhere else, like in that room. And so they uh, sing a song called At the Ball to explain it to him. Again, their language skills <laughs> up 10,000%. Speech therapy yeah. is working. <laughs> It's working. <laughs> yeah. And the birds show up with like, they read these birds. Cause I'm like, where have the birds been? I'm like, I guess they were putting the glass slipper back together. Uh, True, maybe, that, yeah. maybe that's what the girl mice were doing. They had the glue and they were like putting it together. Was it, it glue together. or bird shit? Bird shit. <laughs> we don't ask where they got the glue. Was the yeah. glue from the horses hooves? They sent the yeah. to the glue mm. factory. Old Major wasn't in this movie. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, for my 30th birthday next January, I might call my party like time to take Eliza to the glue factory or something. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. That is better than I the 30s as a funeral thing is it has been played. Yeah. <laughs> so a glue factory twist, a twist in time, if you will. A twist in time. That'd be fun. Dress as your favorite horse. Yeah. Uh yeah, then we you find out who picked a, a My Little Pony from that era. <laughs> you find your brony friends. Uh, so he is like, okay, well, I got to find this this girl. And they, they're they singing. They're like, he's like, oh, I love the song. They're like, go, go, go. So he's running and the prince or the king is trying on his outfit. And he's like, where are you going? You have to go get married. And he's like, but the talking mice, <laughs> she's not the right one. <laughs> <laughs> he's like first there were bluebirds and there were mice and he's like talking bluebirds he's like don't be silly the the birds don't talk <laughs> uh and he's like i forbid you to take another step down the stairs and this is an iconic meme to scene mm -hmm. where he's just like okay and just leaps yeah out the window and if you see the animation it's just like a ken doll being thrown like there's no mood he's just like <laughs> and I literally like I look away for two seconds to text um uh to text Cullen something and so he was so I was texting him and then I look up and then they're like you can't get past there I was like okay and then he just jumps like he yeeted himself out the window it's truly a yeet motion mm -hmm. yeah he yote himself yeah uh <laughs> This is actually that that clip is in our uh, intro clip that we play in YouTube. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, he gets the horse. They're trying to like lock him and they like close the gates or whatever. Uh, but he gets out and the Grand Duke is like, should I go all police state on his ass? Like a new Cinderella. He chased chased her down, and the king's like, no, let him go. Um, but we do get a fun little gag with the little guy trying to like roll down the, not the drawbridge, the gate. Um, but she, Cinderella is in her, what I'm calling hashtag sad coquette core era, where she's in like a very Marie Antoinette tumbril. She's singing a reprise. She's going to exile on a random ass ship. It's just like a merchant ship and she just has to like sit there. <laughs> uh I, mean, I guess Disney didn't want to animate a prison ship for a direct DVD sequel. Yeah. Uh, but the prince does like he runs, like he runs. The horse is like running up the cliff and like through the light, up the lighthouse, which I love when movies have horses run on like wooden stairs. Uh, and he leaps off, cuts the sail, which that poor merchant, uh, and like slides down and rescues her. And he's like, you're the one. Uh, and they touch hands and like his memories restored. So it's like, it's true love's first kiss, but it's true love's third hand touch. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is kind of strange that only like this time does it sort of like work. I think because he knew. Oh, so, right. Like, he had that imp- th- from the mice. So then, so then the touch isn't that imp- isn't yeah. that powerful. It's just the symbolic, yeah. Mm. Uh, and he's like, "Oh, will you marry me, Cinderella?" <laughs> she's like, "My name's actually Cinderella." Yeah, <laughs> that was good. I'm glad that I'm glad that little thing happened too. Yeah, I was like, I mean, he didn't know her name because they didn't talk about that in the 45 minutes they hung out. Yeah. Uh, and then the mice kept calling her Cinderella in their they, little play. There's lots of fun little poking fun at Cinderella without doing the full di- like kind of post frozen like wow that's so zany that people will do that like where it's just like the joke is yeah he doesn't know her name or like the birds don't talk <laughs> you know uh and so uh he brings her back to the palace and the step family is like shit and they vanish and the king is uh, he the king passes out and they're taking care of him and he's like I can't believe anyone used magic on my son. Uh, but he's like, he says something about her being a good mother or, so, or like looking good for having children. There is like a reference to having children in this scene. Uh, but he's like, oh, is this one you want to marry? He's like, yeah, the stars are shining brighter. So he's like, okay, let's do the wedding uh, and arrest the step family who have vanished. Um, but Cinderella is getting ready for her wedding. She has no friends. <laughs> No one is helping her. It's just this. But I mean, that's how it would have been in any regardless. Yeah, yeah. just the yeah. vice and the birds getting her ready. Well, I mean, because that's what happens in the 2015 one, too. We're like, she's just there by herself getting ready. And then, or like during the wedding. Yeah. It's like the goose is there at the yeah. on the balcony. Yeah, Mr. Goose. Yeah. There's a so, 2015 Cinderella? Yeah, with Lily James. Oh. <gasps> the live action oh, yes. remake yeah yes. but it was like before the live action remakes were live action remakes so it was like mm. more of just a cinderella movie got it uh yeah so now we're getting real crazy because lady tremaine shows up and is like oh like you look great look at her and then it's anastasia and she is in cinderella's body there's like a she cloned her to look exactly like Cinderella. And uh, she's like, the prince will never know. That was an M. Night Shyamalan plot twist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, that genuinely shocked me. I, I also did that. not see that coming. And but then when it happened, I was like, that's horrible that her mother just did that to her. Yeah. That like, not only is she forcing, uh, forcing her into the situation, She's like, you're still not good enough to have this happen to you. So I'm going to change you into the person that I hate the most. <laughs> and then you have to, will have to live your, live your life. entire life like that. Like, oh my God, that is, that is evil. That this is, is a whole other level of evil. This is kind of a horror movie. <laughs> like in many of the things that happen. This is a body like- horror movie, a psychological <laughs> horror movie. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, just like this, like an editing and music difference. This could be a horror movie. Yeah, uh, Blumhouse, I got an idea. Uh, so she, Cinderella's like, oh, but Anastasia, will you be happy? Like, is this what you want? And she's like, I want what you have. Mm-hmm. And it's like you can see she's kind of like, I want that, but like, is this what I want? Like, and uh, Lady Tremaine is like okay, Lucifer, take care of her and zap Cinderella and the mice away to another demented twist. They're literally inside a pumpkin, which is like, how did Lady Tremaine know this? Uh, that that's how she got to the ball. And like the pumpkin like warps and is like this twisted like horror pumpkin and like captures a nearby horse and lucifer yeah. is a human coachman it's a play on the the coach from the first movie i thought yeah. that was really fun yeah I was like, oh that's a really interesting way that like she's doing the same magic but it's it's twisted it, it's like scary looking and the whole yeah. setting is very scary looking is that what's behind you yeah. right 
Yeah. About the pumpkins. And it's like, it's careening to take her to her death. Like, it's an extravagant murder plot. And Cinderella's like fighting out, like she has the mice out. And she's again doing the thing where she's like, okay, you get the pin, like you do this. And she like punches herself out of this she's pumpkin. She's very active. She's actually like doing physical force. Um, because she now she's in a she has the opportunity to yeah and she's in yeah. a situation where it's like that's what's needed <laughs> like otherwise yeah. i'm gonna literally be murdered she wouldn't be able to knock over that door that she was you know locked yeah. in the attic or whatever um yeah this was and also uh, i think that maybe the 2015 cinderella maybe it took a little note from the being in the actual gourd yeah, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Kenneth Branagh's like my favorite movie is Cinderella Three: A Twist in Time. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I took this job. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he's gonna like Lucifer's at one point is gonna eat Gus Gus literally, and she's like yeah. drop him, and then he's gonna kill Gus Gus, and it's like it's intense. Mm-hmm. And she she says bad kitty when yeah. she pushes Lucifer off. Like, you go, girl. (laughs) Yeah, it's her you go, girl moment. Hashtag Women's History Month. Uh, (laughs) And she, uh, he falls into, like, a pond and turns back into cat Lucifer. So in this version of events, he does not die. And, wait, he died in the last? In the, well, he falls down from the tower. But he isn't and, Cinderella too. But, I th- and yeah. I think we said, okay, but he's a cat, nine yeah. lives, they land on their feet. But also that's probably a really tall tower. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, okay, you're right. But does he know how to get home or is he now a woods cat? Is he now feral? I mean, he just wants to eat animals. So he might like that more. He was not being fed by those stepsisters. True. <laughs> Animal abuse. Yeah. Uh, and so she is like, I'm not going to miss my own wedding. And like, horseback rides back. Meanwhile, uh, Anastasia is getting married to the prince as a clone. She still has the seashell. She's stressed. Uh, Mm, Stressed, depressed. (laughs) This feels like a weird dream you'd have after watching Cinderella and then like taking a (laughs) Benadryl. Yeah, you took a Benadryl, you stayed up really late on the Benadryl, so you went a little wonky, and then you finally fell asleep. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, And so she's Cinderella was running up. The guards are stopping her because she's like a ragged woman trying to get into the royal wedding. And the the mice run up their pants so she can get in. Uh, And but so as before Cinderella can even stop, they're like, the priest is like, oh, do you take this man? And Anastasia's like, I don't. Because he's like, oh, my Cinderella. It's and a she's love like, is blind moment. Yeah. And she's like, I can't do this. Like, the moment where she's like, I can't live my life in someone else's body, like, live a lie. Well, and not only that, like, if you also think about like their relationship, hers and Cinderella, it's like Cinderella is sort of like this perfect person that, like, Anastasia is going to have to live up to that. Otherwise, the whole <laughs> shtick is up. And so it's like, how miserable it would be to like also I mean just look like someone else but like have to actually be someone else like play the part personality yeah it's that's hard again psychological body horror horror. yeah Mm -hmm. um and so she's like I don't and Cinderella rushes in and the king is like who wants to marry my son and then Lady Tremaine comes out with Rosella and is like you little ingrate and like creates like a vortex of uh polymorph and is like turning all the guards into different animals it's like yeah. going off the chandelier um and uh she's gonna turn anastasia into something because now that's her number one enemy and cinderella is like stop no more and she's like oh better two of you she was gonna sacrifice herself for anastasia yeah and then the prince comes in with his sword and he, mm. he bunts it. <laughs> yeah. He bunts it right into the stepmother's face. And uh, they turn into frogs back at their house. Uh, and then they later turn it back into humans, but as maids. Uh, so it's a temporary polymorph. Uh, so Anastasia, so the prince and her are reunited, or the prince and 
yeah, and Cinderella and Anastasia picks up the wand and everyone's kind of like, and she turns herself back into herself and she gives the shell back to the king. And she's like, I don't deserve this. And he's like, everyone deserves true love. And that's where I'm like, is he gonna? No. Okay, good. good. We're good. We're in the clear. He's staying in the paternal. (laughs) It was a father moment. Love that. Perfect. But I was, at first I was like, oh, oh no. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Woo! Cleared. <laughs> he was more like, you need some parent parental affection. Because I was like, you're You need someone who loves you, including a parent figure who loves you. Here you go. I'm going to show you some love right now. There you go. Yeah. And uh, Cinder- and it's Cinderella thanks her. And they restore the fairy godmother. Um, And the fairy godmother is like, oh, would you like to go back to your former lives? And they're like, what? And she's like, all right. Never mind. <laughs> okay. I I I am now a one and a half truther. I believe that this takes place before the series of vignettes because otherwise that's the only way that that the fact that Anastasia is the one who finds love because Drizella doesn't, right? No, but it's she just also lives with her family still in the second one. Hmm. But they maybe guess they, they turned back together. from frogs. Yeah, maybe it's just a different uh and so cinderella gets a new wedding dress different than her original and lovely they kiss and she's like and they lived happily ever after again again <laughs> <laughs> and um, i still believe by hayden Panettiere, famous pop star uh and uh they show more portraits where they don't care about portrait logic like one is literally <laughs> like almost like a photo booth like they got strip. a magic DSLR. <laughs> yeah. They made one out of out of a comquat or something. <laughs> yeah. We can only okay. use it for a few hours, guys. It's like their version of a portable camera or disposable yeah. camera. Uh okay. Before we do our final thoughts, we have to okay, the time travel rules. Because this is our, our missing link between Cinderella month and time travel month. Let's do it. Okay, so when you go back you mostly erase the initial timeline. It's not like that future is way, it's it's very, it's not like, oh, we need to get back to that. It's like, that's gone. But the fairy godmother could restore them to it. So it is just an alternative, it's an alternative universe. Yeah. It's So so the path was here. And then from this end point, they got shot back here. And so the, now they have two parallel universes where like in the other universe, the wand didn't get snatched or the, and there's also one where the wand did get snatched and uh you know who knows what happened to yeah you know if right. if that if that continues or does it just loop back? i think it would just loop back on itself yeah that's how it would yeah. work but yeah alternative universe love that uh and if you are there for the spell happening mm-hmm. or if you're a fae you're aware of the original timeline you still have those memories which I think that's perfectly logical in this movie. I I do like at first I was like, huh? And then I was like, well, if they're just all in the same room, you know, sure. I can believe that they're all getting swept up. They're seeing it happening. They know yeah. the wand is in her hands. They get that Cinderella and the prince are somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're literally next door, but still they're not in the same room, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the fairy godmother knowing of course she does. She's overseer of magic in this universe. Yeah. Yeah. So they, and they choose to remain in the alternate universe, uh, which is wild if these movies are considered canon. Uh, that is, I love that. Um, but honestly, I feel like in some ways this timeline is better because the prince had to fight and prove his love for her. He had to go rescue her um and she has a better relationship with anastasia and the cat's not dead yeah yeah i think that like he also has a better relationship with his father even though i don't necessarily think those things are inherently linked because it seems they retconned the king a little bit in this one um but yeah i do like the fact that her and anastasia have a better relationship um and anastasia again worked for that because in cinderella to electric boogaloo it's just kind of like Anastasia is upset and Cinderella is just, oh, like, let me help you. Yeah. Um, in this, like, Cinderella does not have a relationship with them initially. And then in the re in this new universe, when Anastasia shows self-sacrifice and like willingness 
to resist her mother, Cinderella's like, oh my gosh, thank you, you know? Mm-hmm. What yeah. if the evil stepmother does another twist in time where she's like, no, 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 no. My daughter and stepdaughter cannot be getting along because they'll realize <laughs> what a shithead I am. And then goes back to the original time, like, tries to fuck up both of their lives. Uh, so, yeah, the the vibes, I guess, what are kind of our, like, I thought the animation was pretty cu- good and, like, fun and, like, yeah, good colors. It's not as wonky as the other, like, made for TV sequels it's, or made for vhs sequels it's like oh uh this definitely looks a lot cleaner um i also think that they did a pretty good job of making her look like this version of cinderella again i thought they did a pretty good job um yeah animation was good what do we think of the songs i don't like any of the songs completely over my head i'm so sorry in one ear out the other did not yeah because one wasn't there one of them was a reprise right yeah yeah couldn't tell you which one it is but i'm like oh that sounds familiar from something they sang earlier <laughs> earlier in this 70 minute movie yeah yeah uh yeah. i do oh, go, go ahead eliza uh, songs didn't stand out to me either they all kind of sounded like the intro song in enchanted was like i've been dreaming of a true yeah. love because it's kind of yeah. just like in- in- intentionally stereotypical yeah fairy tale yeah song. yeah i i do liked like her ballad but like it did kind of when I like when I first saw the movie I'm like that ballad's so good and now I'm kind of like it's a it's a ballad yeah but it's it fun. ballads it ballads um, I like yeah. it for the character and I like the intro song I think there's not that many songs in the movie and I'm not going to say the movie needed more songs but it kind of stops being a musical about halfway through and then we get the my song and I'm like ah this is a this is a skip for me. Cinderella kind of like that too. Like there's not like a lot of consistent music. Well, there's the I think the songs because there's are so much animals. Yeah. yeah. But the songs are pretty spaced out. And then at the end, there's a finale, which is something a lot of modern Disney movies don't. Like Frozen, the last song is Fixer Upper. Really? And then it's just yeah no reprises no... after that? you just fucked my brain up so hard by saying that the last song is fixer upper because there's no finale song they play like you kind of hear oh do you want to build a snowman it's the same entangled i think i see the light is the last song but that's yeah. more emotionally impactful than fixer upper totally. yeah but and that's there's the bananas. there's music that's used like there's finale music there's like the music when she's healing him with her hair i mean there's right the, the chanting snow. when Elsa removes the snow, but yeah. You're like my Disney professor. This is blowing my fucking mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Moana ends with singing, right? Because they're singing when they're sailing, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then when um the, the volcano lady god comes out of the ocean, I don't know if it's um like the character singing, but there is a song there that's really beautiful. It may be in a Polynesian language. Oh, there's there's that yes. in the background, and then Moana is singing like "I know who you are," because well, yes. the climax yeah. is a, a song. Mm-hmm. Um, that's yeah. bonkers. Okay, I did like the mice's song, the at the ball, because it's like, oh, that's cute. It's catchy. Yeah. Um. But other than that, music was very meh. Like it wasn't bad. It was just like I'm not gonna remember these songs. Uh, characters we root for our protagonist, Cinderella. Yeah. Of course, she, you know, she's got a lot more things going on because she's like, oh, okay, I can actually leave my house. I can yeah. actually go to, the- she gets, she can get up to more shit, which yeah. I liked. Yeah, I feel like she stays true to the OG, but she's put in different circumstances and you see like her cleverness, uh, I think. Uh, and who's more easy to root for than a woman being gaslit? by magic in the universe itself like she knows she knows what happened she knows the truth we know the truth and everyone is gaslighting her and us (laughs) yeah and so it's like we're like we're on her side what do do you think eliza yeah i think yeah obviously you definitely root for her you root for everyone to get away from the stepmother honestly yeah um and i don't know as someone who always felt like i looked more like anastasia and the stepsisters than cinderella and like felt weird about that like um i'm glad that the you root for the stepsisters a little bit too you know yeah you definitely root for anastasia because it's like you see that 
in a different family dynamic, she would thrive. Like she wouldn't do the mean things mm-hmm. we saw her doing in the last movie because like mm-hmm. she like she wouldn't be encouraged in that behavior and she would be like a nice person. Yeah, Gisela, the jury is still out. On her. <laughs> yeah. Gisella, yeah. Maybe she's going to be the stepmother's successor. Yeah. Drizella, yeah. yeah. Anastasia and Drizella definitely have a tense relationship after this. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, because I think we, I think Cinderella and Anastasia are both protagonists in this. Um, and I definitely root for her to find love. And I, I'm going to root, I root for Prince, I ship Cinderella and Prince Charming in this movie way more than in the original. Same. Because he's a himbo and I think he has some interest in women uh <laughs> and like they will it's, it's enough that doesn't make their marriage a marriage of convenience yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we yeah. see him being interested in her and fighting for her whereas in the animated it's the grand duke it's like he won't sleep until he finds her and we're like he's not here to sell us though <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's not a lavender marriage, just a lavender castle. Yeah, in the back. Yes. Castle. Yes. it's a lavender haze. Yeah. Uh, Hannah, do you are, do you ship them more? Are we in consensus on that? Or yeah, yeah, because I think we actually get more of them interacting. Like they have like cute flirty moment at the beginning of the movie. Um, it's more than just them dancing and singing together. So yeah. Um, and the king is totally different. So in that way, we're also, I'm a little less worried for her at the end. Yes and no, because he's still like, she's just for breeding and refining yeah. the bloodline. So I don't know. It's still a sinister environment that she lives in. Um, but I guess like, I don't know. I guess we can kind of assume that the stepmother, like there, she's not going to try to yeah. come back because... I mean, yeah. she tried the ultimate thing that she could do was use magic, <laughs> yeah. and she failed, so. Uh, did you ever see uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt? Yes. Uh, where, like, he's Titus is playing music, and it's, like, Electronicon or whatever, and Kimmy's like, can you put lyrics? And then it's, like, he's the lyrics are, I hit that bitch with a bat. And she's like, what? And he's like, I can't fix America. <laughs> and that's why, like, <laughs> like, when it comes to, like, her happy ending, it's like, yeah, the king sucks, but it's kind of her society. It's like, I can't fix the world she lives yeah. in. Yeah, that's true. He can uh, stay in his wing of the castle. <laughs> yeah, boundaries. Uh, and yeah, the antagonist, I think the Wicked Stepmother, it's fun to see her with magic. And it's also fun to kind of realize that like, she, in a way, she's her own worst enemy. Like many toxic people are. Like she could do anything, but she's more concerned in ruining the life of someone who did nothing to her. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And yeah. And Drizella, she, I kind of, I kind of want a movie about her. Like what's going on with her? What's her inner world? Because there's gotta be more to her than just like being just like her mom. Or yeah. if it is like, she's trying to be like her mom. Like, what does that look like? How is that affecting her? Um, and her relationship yeah. with her sister, you know, I just think that just kind of having a bit more with the stepsisters in a different setting where like you can see one of them is m- we're more sympathetic and empathetic toward her. It's just like makes me think, OK, well, what about the other one? Because in the first movie, you couldn't yeah. feel that for them at all. Um, Maybe Giselle yeah. steals steals the ship, the conservatorship, and goes <laughs> off and becomes a pirate queen. <laughs> Love that. And shows up in a Treasure Planet reboot. Love that. Love that for her. Yeah. Cinderella 4, time was twisted, now space. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the ship gets set. That's right. Treasure Planet. I forgot for a second it takes place in space, <laughs> even though it's named Treasure Planet because it's so pirate. But... Oh, pirate. Did you, you know, the Cinderella musical I did, actually, that is the one of the stepsister's goals is to be a pirate. Oh, <laughs> so, my God. Synergy. This synergy. is synergy. Synergy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it is just, it's fun also just to see the, I think the Wicked Stepmother really continues to be a scary villain in this. Uh, yeah. Theme, what is this movie saying? Is it saying anything? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think what... it's saying, you know, 
I think it's saying dreams come true again. Yeah. <laughs> dreams come true. Sometimes, Sometimes you just have to work harder when the odds are stacked even higher. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone sure. deserves true love. Sometimes yeah. you gotta go fast and furious in a pumpkin. Yes. You know? <laughs> fast and furious. Vegetable yeah. drift. <laughs> Vegetable <laughs> drift. The uh, next Veggie Tales movie. Oh, oh, I would love that. <gasps> oh my god, now I want Veggie Tales, but Fast and the Furious. I want it. I mean, they did Lord of the Rings. They could do Fast and the Furious. They yeah. did Lord of the Rings. Yes. yes. Once Veggie Tales started running out of like Bible stories that were easy to tell, they're like, okay, could we do Madame Bovary? Like, okay, maybe Lord <laughs> of the Rings. Yeah. Okay. So, but back to Cinderella three. Um, was that your fantasy? I mean, yeah, it was a fun ride. I mean, I was here for it. You know, again, kind of repeat some of the same old beats, but it it gives you a different outcome of those beats, which is kind of cool. Um yeah, I I thought it was I thought it was fun. I'm here it, for it. It rearranges the chessboard and like takes the plot device that was in her favor and turns it against her. Yes. Yeah. Eliza? Yes, we did the time warp in the Cinderella universe. <laughs> time has been warped, and yes, yes, this is my fantasy. Although I do want that pirate AU, or Cinderella just takes the ship and she's like, fuck this prince, let me go be a pirate queen. I also yeah. love that. Yeah. This, yeah, I, I love this movie. It is my fantasy. It is a... It is a fanfic -y, like, weird thing. So you're like, is it a good movie? I'm like, maybe. Yeah, it is for, like, what it's trying to be. Yeah. Like, a movie no one asked for, no one wanted, but they had to make it anyway. It turns out pretty good. <laughs> like, Yeah, that's it's, true. Like, it has, it looks good. It's fun. And it's just, it's a good time. Whereas, like, I think a lot of the other Disney sequels delve into, like, too painful to witness mm. <laughs> yeah and i also think that this movie focused on its central characters again whereas like you said earlier a lot of the other sequels will dive into new characters like the children of the protagonist yeah. and it's like that's not why i'm here <laughs> you yeah. know i'm here to see cinderella get up to more shenanigans and they came up with an insane but yet folklorically somewhat sound but also like an interesting new thing to happen that's crazy but like when you think of like how cliche it is to be like what if ariel just became a hypocrite and her daughter was her just like her you know it's like it's like you're you're doing character boring. assassination also yeah it's like <laughs> it's like you're taking away all that growth and there's a lady in the tramp one where it's the kid is it's like a reverse thing i think those ones are the least creative yeah yeah i think and also, like, in terms of, like, the Cinderella story, it does actually, it kind of is, like, an adaptation of the story. It's like, okay, we have all the central beats of the Perot, but what if we did this other thing with it and sort of added a sort of another loop? Um, yeah. So, yeah, in that, it is also playing with the original story, quote-unquote original story. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, like, in directly interacting with the the specific tales that it was pulling from in the first movie where like the other sequels don't do that yeah and exploring the characters yes yeah so uh yeah, yeah that i think it deserves it's 75 percent critical I, yeah for a critical response for a sequel yeah let me confirm if, if it was audience or critical cinderella i also that was love on... that it was an hour but it was an hour long yeah, Shout out like to short movies. 70 yeah. minutes. A but great it, time. It felt longer, not in a bad way, just because there was so much that happened. Yeah. So it uses its time very effectively. Yeah, and it's very fast paced. Yeah. It's just like boom. And it is 75% critical review. That's awesome. Good for them. Yeah. Yeah. They earned it. Cinderella Month was a hoot. Uh, I definitely will be. We salute I'm, her. We salute Cinderella for all her service. Uh, and I will, we will have some Instagram polls comparing all these movies 
Uh, and I am debating how many polls because I can think of several categories. I could do a whole award ceremony of just Cinderella things. All right, the Cinderellies. The Cinderellies. I'm like, do I make a a Google form Ballot. and just see what oh, people good. that could be? If we could and announce it at some point. Um, but Hannah, of all the Cinderellas we've watched, this one included. Mm. Which your which is your favorite? Mm. I think. It's a pretty close tie between Brandy Cinderella and the 2015 Cinderella. I really did enjoy the 2015 Cinderella after not having liked it before. Um, but there's just something about Brandy Cinderella that is just like uber charming. Yeah. That it's not that the other movies don't have it. It's just like, I think in talking about that movie, I did say, you know, like it definitely looks like they're on a set. Yeah. And there's something weirdly storybook stage. Yeah. So yeah, it sort of adds like another level of charm. So I'm going to say it's a tie, but I think I'm leaning more towards the Brandy Cinderella. Yeah, I think Brandy definitely has the best arc. Yes. Because I, I think agree. they give her a, a very a solid arc. of Very simple, but it's very solid. I think I'm going to, I do love, I think I'm gonna, I, for me, it's a tie between the animated and the Lily James. But I know that the animated one is partially supported by nostalgia. But I think it also, the animated one has really strong emotions and really like intense sequences. Uh, it's like things just feel very deeply. I think it's a very emotional movie. Uh, and I think the Lily James one is very inspiring and just very beautiful. And like, it's a great character exploration. Uh, but I, oh yeah, and I did also really enjoy the Brandy Cinderella Um yeah, I'm so this was a great a great journey. Shocking you, no one. We did not at all mention Camilla Cabello's Cinderella. <laughs> no, no, we didn't. Um, do we did you do you feel like you learned something new on, on this Cinderella journey, Hannah? Oh hell yeah. I mean, I didn't know much about the Cinderella stories because there are so many of them. I didn't know that she was literally the it girl of the fairy tale folklore world. Yeah. Um and that like this story is so common across like every culture there's a version of it um and also just like the different ones that are being pulled from in these different movies is just like there's a lot of Perot, but also we talked a lot about Grimm too yeah um yeah so it's just yeah i learned a lot about i guess folklore across the world is that there's a lot of stories that are just common stories that everyone will tell and cinderella is one of them so yeah something about her we're just like that's that's the one love her <laughs> love her we love her yeah i think i had a lot of fun like getting to kind of like be like what is cinderella and like why do we love to retell it why do we love to do weird twist in time sequels but like it, where she still gets that happy ending it's like something primal in us where we need her to get mm -hmm. that happiness and it's it's just a lot of fun to explore also just how the same story can be retold in so many different variations both in movie form and folktale form uh yeah eliza do you have a favorite cinderella do i have a favorite cinderella um well i hear the brandy one is fantastic i haven't seen it i need to um i've heard so many good things about that one i watched the um this is a deep cut but the selena gomez another cinderella story uh -huh. i was um as like an 18 year old actually because my friend olivia shout out to olivia had it like on dvd or something and we just play it um it's, and it's it's fun it's like a an ipod era or i think it was actually a zoom era a zoom Ooh, era. ow like uh. it was ipod era but they had yeah. zooms like Oh, I remember uh, another Cinderella. I think Zoom sponsored it, and it was it was fun. It, yeah. So um, cool. that one sticks with me for some reason. <laughs> love I that. love Probably that. Probably not ten times. <laughs> I love it. So, Eliza, where can people find your social media? Yes, you can find me um, on Instagram uh, at possum girl underscore ig. That's at p o s s u m girl underscore i g um or just search my name eliza halpern e l y z a last name h a l p e r n or find me on tiktok at possum girl no underscore um before it gets banned 
Yeah. And I yeah. Just... Shows all around Los Angeles and possibly in other cities at some point this summer or fall. <gasps> Ooh, Ooh, awesome. Yes, definitely check Eliza out. Um, and also get on that TikTok before, you know, they can't sell it to someone in America and the app is gone. Uh, before it's so... gone or Zuck takes over. Or so. <laughs> and this becomes Instagram reels. Yeah. Yeah. RIP to our future, probably. Uh, anyway. But you can follow Not My Fantasy on Instagram and TikTok as well. We are at Not My Fantasy Pod. And, you know, if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever, give us a five star review. Let us know what you love about the podcast. Please actually do write a review. We have some yes. reviews, but, you know, we're doing pretty well. Like our viewership is, I'm happy with it. But don't let you write the review because that it, then we'll come up in more searches and we'll call it, we'll gain more listeners and we're an independent podcast you, you can know? also just write like hi in your review yeah like as long as there's a review like text yeah. there the algorithm loves it yeah you know so just if you like us send a review if you hated this keep scrolling get, you have better get creative with emojis Use emojis to describe how you feel about yeah. our podcast. Just because you to know, decode that. Yeah, Dan Brown style. Dan Brown style. We're just having a lot of fun, and we want more people along on the journey. And if you are watching on YouTube, hi, hello, you can smash that like button. Smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell so that you get notified every time that we drop a new episode. Because you're definitely gonna want to watch for our next series because it is going to be just as bonkers if not more <laughs> it's going to be great all right um so this yes we said this was like our missing link movie so our next journey we're journeying across time we're twisting through time we're doing time travel movies mm. and yeah. yeah so this is kind of a like a where sci-fi and fantasy meet yeah uh and I'm excited because the next movie is from one of my favorite movie decades. And also, uh, reminded me a lot of this one when I was watching it. Uh, in, like, the time travel rules. I was like, oh, yeah. very Cinderella 3, it was in time. Yeah, wow. Oh, yeah. Uh, which, and which... Um, the lore that I am, well, it's, I guess, science, actually, science, science fiction lore that I'm researching is going to be so much fun to talk about uh yeah it's melting my brain but in a good way we're talking about 1985 uh the song by bowling soup, bowling for and soup. more specifically the cover by kelly clarkson which is <laughs> yeah. amazing uh we're talking about 1985 back to the future mm -hmm. well, the, yeah. the ultimate time travel movie and we and got we have a fantastic guest Another one of our professors. <laughs> Who is a big fan of this movie. I think probably a big fan of this era of yeah. movies as well. Yeah. And so it'll be like when we had Debbie on for Little Mermaid. And anytime she'd be like, that's a good point. And be like, yes, getting an A. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for validation on, <laughs> on our thoughts. Oh, my God. It's going to be so good. It's going to give me the mental health boost that I need. <laughs> to, like, push me through the rest of this winter. <laughs> So, Eliza, thank you so much for joining us on this unhinged journey. Of course. And I'd like to say that um, their Instagram account has the most enchanting memes. The <laughs> memes, the polls are always on point. So another thank reason you. to follow them. Yeah, Cullen kills it. He'll send me them. Literally, he'll be like, yeah, the first thing I did this morning was send you this, <laughs> these memes. I was like, these are all quality. So good. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, tune in for Back to the Future. And we'll see you next week, everybody. Yeah. Bye, listeners. Bye. Twist your time. <laughs> Be a time twister. Be a time twister. Be the time you want to twist in the world. Inspiration. Happy Women's History Month.